Hey folks, Carmen here from Urban Farm School. Um, we're shooting some videos with Verge Permaculture for whom uh, I teach, co-teach the Permaculture Design Certification course. And of course, we're talking about all kinds of strategies around urban uh, permaculture and urban um, agriculture. So today we're in my tiny little greenhouse. Of course, in an urban environment, greenhouse sizes are decreased quite uh, a bit more than the, um, than the, the, on the rural scale. So we're always looking for strategies for success in small greenhouse growing. So if you take a look at how this greenhouse is constructed, um, then if you want to back up just a little bit, we can have a look at just kind of the outside to begin with. And what we did, this is basically a standard uh, greenhouse kit that we basically place on top of a two foot high pony wall. That meant that we had to uh, build some doors, some custom made doors that we built that were actually very easy to do. And uh, that gave us the height that we needed in this greenhouse because some of these kits can end up being quite small and they're not really that useful and they heat up too much as well. So that was one strategy that gave us uh, quite a bit of usefulness out of this little greenhouse. This is an 8 by 12 polycarbonate greenhouse. Um, so one way we work, make this work for us in a northern climate is, of course, we can't grow in our greenhouses uh, year round unless we have auxiliary heat, which is a you know pretty poor use of fossil fuels because most of the time in our winter months here, there's not enough solar energy really to grow plants healthily. So, uh, but of course our cool nights here, we have a really big issue in Calgary, and at least in our zone three garden here, uh, with the nights being really cool, even in the summer. So some of our really warm season crops like tomatoes and peppers which is what we grow in this greenhouse primarily uh, they really don't love those big temperature swings between hot daytime temperatures and cool nighttime temperatures so one way that we reduce that stress is we try to find ways to, to balance that out and a greenhouse is a great way to do that but also utilizing thermal mass so basically what we're doing is is we're trying to create opportunities for uh, a, a, a substrate of some kind to be heated up during the day and then radiate that heat out during the evening when the temperatures cool off. So what we've done here is we've 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 lined a portion of the northern side of our greenhouse here. The bottom buckets all have a pea gravel in there. Now the top buckets are filled with water. Now water has the best ability to store thermal mass but because of the location of those lower buckets on the other side of this planter if we filled those with water we would have to then bend over every fall over this over this bed and 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 because we have to empty them out in the winter time otherwise the the, the, the uh, water will freeze and will bust our buckets so with the gravel in the bottom we don't have to do anything it's basically there absorbing that thermal energy during the day the water does the same thing a little more efficiently and we could even actually add another layer here i do sometimes place pots on here with um, other items to grow like additional sweet peppers or hot peppers or whatever um, on that back row so this is a good height for me to do that so basically uh, we've got a very simple greenhouse here and we've utilized some uh, a number of we have four vents in here and we have a fan now the number one reason for failure and proliferation of diseases like fungal diseases in greenhouses lack of air circulation so that's the one piece that most people do completely wrong or they completely underestimate how much venting they actually need in the real hot days of summer we have the ability to pop out one of these uh, polycarbonate panels in the back so that we get even more airflow. So in, in certain parts of the summer, we're not getting that really cool uh, dip in temperatures during the hours of the night. It, or if we're going away for a few days, we always leave the greenhouse wide open on both ends. So that allows good air circulation, especially in a greenhouse where you have a lot of plants growing deep planters such as these that absorb a lot of moisture and so they're always releasing that moisture into the atmosphere and in, in the atmosphere in this greenhouse. So that is like a deadly combination if you've got a hot greenhouse um, and you've got tons and tons of moisture you are going to get um, fungal issues and you're going to get insect issues as well. So air circulation is the key to success. Uh, the other key to success is to have growing beds that are, are actually in contact with the soil below. All of this, uh, this little bed here, all that it's really doing is holding in uh, really, really good quality topsoil. 
we in this area we had pretty compacted clay below we loosened that up we built this box on top and added really good quality loam tons of, of homemade compost and worm castings and that sort of thing so um, so how we maintain fertility in these beds is is we mulch over winter so because this area stays so warm, even in February, we can come out here at, at 2, 3 in the afternoon and it's 20, 25 degrees in here. So you know that the soil microbes are going to be really busy in this soil in the greenhouse for much longer during the year than the outdoor uh, soil will. So one way we, we deal with that is we make sure before we put our, our um, beds to rest for the winter that we that we, we give them you know we make sure they're not too 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 dry and then we put straw mulch on quite thickly over top of the soil the reason we want to do that is we want to let this ground freeze solid and then we want to put the mulch on top to keep it frozen so we're not getting you know we're trying to minimize um, uh, the time that this soil spends actually thawed during the winter. We want to keep it frozen, keep the soil microbes from being too overactive and consuming all of the um, organic matter in our soil. So that's one strategy that we use. Also, another reason we like to do that is that we keep that soil a little bit moist. And what that, what that means is that when it comes to planting in the spring, we're not dealing with heavily compacted soil. Now, as soil dries out, like if I left this soil bare all through the winter, this soil would be as hard as a rock. Now there is some compaction in here because this side wasn't covered as well, but you can see I can put my, my uh, trowel right in. If you don't do that, sometimes your soil in a, in, a, in a bed like this will become rock hard. And even with the coverage, I mean, I dug a hole in here earlier, but the sun's been shining, there's still quite a bit of good moisture in that soil and it's still soft and friable. Otherwise this would feel like concrete. And it doesn't matter how good your soil is, if it's exposed to the sun and the heat all winter long, it's going to become very compact. And the only thing you can do at that point is open up the soil. So if you've got that situation, like in a bucket like that, this one was covered so it stayed moist. But if you've got a situation where your soil is really, really dry and it's hard as a rock, the best way to deal with that is actually to use a watering wand and really open up the soil with water. So if you, and you have to saturate it before it will open up and you leave it for a day or two, you'd be surprised how much moisture it will, hold, it will, it will absorb. So you have to come back multiple, multiple times in one day and then you leave it for a day and then you can come in and work in that soil. You can't really work in it when it's super dry if it's remained uncovered during the uh, winter months, it'll be just rock hard. So the same is actually true of any of your um, hanging baskets like we utilize here. We also cover these, we let them freeze solid in the winter and then we cover them with mulch. So they won't be hanging here, they'll be, they'll be uh, placed down somewhere else and then covered with mulch. We want to try to keep them as frozen as possible. With small containers like this, it's a little more difficult to do that, but with larger ones, no problem. So we are in here um, in February or so, and we're sowing, um, you know, spinach and mizuna and corn salad and komatsuna and those kinds of cold loving greens. Uh, we're sowing throughout this one, especially this one bed. Um, and we, we've just finished harvesting the last of, of those crops in here for salad greens. Now this is gonna get, um, uh, basically just just tilled in, not tilled in, but you know incorporated in. I'll amend this bed with some worm castings and some some good homegrown compost and um, and then we'll be planting our peppers in here and some peppers as well on our hanging baskets. So so we can get uh, a really good start to the season by by actually growing cool season uh, salad crops in here. Now that time of year these these salad greens or these these um, these raw greens are going to be growing really slowly because there's just not enough solar resources um, to, to promote quick growth. But that's okay. We're, we're all totally okay with that. Once temperatures start to hit the way they are now, we're just at the end of May, these guys were just starting to bolt. They're starting to go to seed with, you know, cool season crops are stressed by heat. 
warm season crops are stressed by cold. So in our greenhouse here, we know that there's a limited window of time where we can grow our cool season greens in here, at least to a mature size. So if you have a larger greenhouse or you've got in-ground beds, these also have uh, access to the soil below, and you want to grow uh, market greens, let's say, you can grow them quite successfully um, in a hoop house or in a regular greenhouse like this, as long as you're harvesting them very young. But there's going to be a point uh, where you're going to have difficulty growing them. Uh, if you're growing a taller crop, like rows of tomatoes, uh, in a hoop house or in a tall greenhouse like this, you can underseed that crop with your greens because there's adequate shade to help prevent bolting. So tomorrow I'll be in here prepping these beds and getting all of my tomatoes and peppers planted. They've been very patient uh, waiting for the right time. So, so that's our project for tomorrow and that'll be a lot of fun. So I'm excited to get that going and uh, hope that uh, some of these tips have been helpful to you. Oh, I didn't point out that we also um, use this type of this is just a foam insulation that you can get from the hardware store and basically that really, really um, helps us out in, in here. So we've got insulation in all of these north walls and, uh, and so it, it proves that basically a, you know, a, a standard little greenhouse kit can actually, actually function extremely well uh, for increasing productivity. So we use this greenhouse primarily for our warm season crops. Uh, like I mentioned, tomatoes and peppers, but most of our tomatoes we actually grow outside. Um, I find that um, that they do incredibly well here. There's a few longer season tomatoes that I'm growing in the greenhouse, but mostly our peppers. In this kind of uh, area that we live in, it's, it's quite challenging to grow peppers outdoors, but in a greenhouse, peppers and basil, they love it in here. It's just fantastic. We get really, really great production off of them in here. So I hope you've enjoyed this little introduction to small greenhouse management. And, uh, um, you know, in our climate, we really, extending the season even by, you know, three weeks on either side is pretty significant. So I encourage you to find ways to extend your season. And uh, folks, if you have any questions uh, or any comments, please enter them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I look forward to a really great growing season.